Welcome to Dupo Remo. In a world. In a steel cage. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny because I remember back in 1997, or I guess it must have been 98 or 99 when I was thinking, I I was reading some book, actually a series of books. I want to say it was the K. Scarpetta books that Patricia Cornwell wrote. My wife was really into those, and so she got, you know, we got them, and I was reading them as well. And I was thinking, gosh, what they need to do, instead of, like, taking this and making it, like, a two-hour movie, they should, like, make a series that's based on this, and they can go through and actually do all the stuff that's in the book. And they can have four, five, six episodes per book... And work their way through it. That would be so awesome. And I bet you like a channel like HBO or something like that could do that. And I I don't know if I just set it too close to the bug that was in my lamp or something. But they did that. I mean, they didn't do it with K. Scarpetta books. But they did that with Suki Stackhouse books. They did it with... Was Suki Stackhouse the first book that they did those with? Or were there other ones that were based off of books? Because they started doing those like Spartacus and and all of those, but those weren't based off novels, were they? Well, Spartacus is a novel, but yeah, it could be that True Blood was the first one that was a book series that they decided to do that way. And and they do a book for a season, and right. the next season is the next book. But the seasons are only like 10 episodes or 12 episodes it, or yeah, so, right? Yeah, about around a dozen. But that's the best way to go. And then when you're on a channel like that, you don't have to do 24 or 22 right. episodes. So. But yeah, see, that's what I was thinking way back when. And I think it's so cool that they've actually done that, that they're doing that. And so you could take and – and I also was thinking that Robert Jordan books should be done in that same way. And instead they did uh, George R.R. R. Martin books, which are similar heft and similar number of characters. So uh, yeah, I mean I just think it's so cool. And Well, hey, the Game of Thrones has been so successful – I guarantee you that they've gone to Jordan's estate and said, hey, can we try and do Wheel of Time in this way? I don't know who makes the decisions, if it's Sanderson or, or what, but... Oh, it's but, uh, it's Robert Jordan's uh, wife. She picked Sanderson to write the books for her and said, here's his notes. You better get it right or else. That's what happens when something is successful. You see a bunch of things inspired by it or things that, <laughs> right. that have taken its lead and decided to go... Things that, that are similar. Yeah. Oh, you know what? The Dexter series was also based on a series of books. Oh, that Maybe that was before True Blood. Cool. That whole idea, I just love that. And I think that's so cool because always when I go to see a movie that's based on a book, oftentimes I'm if I've read the book first, it's really hard to not be disappointed by the movie because they always have to leave tons out for it to be a movie because movies just can't be that long. They can't give you a 12-hour movie like Garrick von Stroheim one agreed to be. It just can't happen. People won't sit in a theater that long. They're not going to go and spend an entire day and have to have four intermissions or whatever to be able to experience this thing. But you can do it on TV because people will surely come back once a week and watch for an hour. That's not a big deal. I think it's really cool. And I look forward to seeing more and hopefully, you know, more more things that I'm a fan of to begin with. Well, another thing that's been really successful that bodes well for the industry is Walking Dead oh, yeah. did really, really well. And that's as far as I know, that's the first comic book adaptation in series form, movie, uh, mini series form. What would you call it? limited series? You want to... Telenovela. Or is Walking <laughs> Dead just a series now? You could probably say it's a series. It's just like Suki Stackhouse or or True Blood or whatever. You know, those are going to keep coming back and they're just going to keep doing, I guess, eventually they're going to run out of books to to do. (laughs) I don't know. I think she writes two a year (laughs) and they do one a year as adaptations. But I think they've said when the actors start to age noticeably and they can no longer be (laughs) immortal, they're like, well, we better hang this up. Yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, those kind of things made from books that I'm already a fan of. And I'll be like, yeah, the Robert Jordan series is going to start up and they're going to do every little bit. Well, yeah, and Ron Howard wanted to do The Dark Tower as movie series and at the same time television series. Something that had never been done before. And what my understanding was, was the adult Roland adventures were what the movies were. And the television would be young Roland being trained up as a gunslinger and all that stuff. 
I think that was a brilliant idea, but maybe it would have been just better to just do it as a series and say, you know, yeah, and have to flashbacks to the young Roland and stuff. But you know, they already yeah. did that because they did that with Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I I don't Ron have Howard feelings still that idea one way or another on that but <laughs> you know someday I'm well I I'm not going to be able to but boy I, I want that if if it were up to me I would do a, an amazing Spider-Man series that's just like that you know follows the comic books or an X-Men series with everybody in the school as teenagers and that and just oh that would be my dream is to do the teenage X-Men television series in that way like an hbo series where you only have to do 10 episodes a year or 12 Mm -hmm. and and focus on it and give every single one of these characters something to do and arcs and make you care about you know every little thing and the way that you do in a comic book and that's an advantage that serialized things have is they can just build and refer to other things and remind you and somebody goes away and then they come back and you're like, oh, I can't believe so-and-so came back and and you have history and all that. You don't have to tie everything up in a, a little bow at the end. And as these things go on, we'll see more and more of that. And, uh, oh, well, you know, it's if, if the cinema has to suffer, so be it. It's just, you know, movies, they've, they've lost some of their focus. It used to be that if, there was a big movie star, people would go see anything that that person was in. And that day seems to be over. You know, it's not enough that it's just a John Wayne movie, you know? Or, a, or maybe we don't have a John Wayne anymore. There's I don't a few know. that are like, like we were in this recording session, but we mentioned Johnny Depp and he's right now that guy, I think. He's the most bankable guy in the world right now as an yeah. actor. But if you look at the three movies he made in 2011... They weren't all spectacular I, hits. Or... I think a lot of that has to do with Johnny Depp, though, and just the way he is. He doesn't want to be the guy that's in Pirates of the Caribbean movies only. He wants to do a movie like Rum Diaries that's strange and wacky and unusual and quirky that only appeals to a certain group. And he's not happy without making sure he still gets his chops in as an actor kind of a thing. Kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio, who wouldn't just be teen heartthrob guy. He toiled away in movies that people weren't interested in because they weren't the mass appealed kind of films. And I think that might be the deal with him and why some of his movies aren't huge. But as long as it's got some sort of mass appeal. I mean, you saw how much freaking money Alice in Wonderland made. Released in spring. And he wasn't even the main character. He was what they centered that whole Yeah, but about. they tried to make it into it somehow. He's Tonto. In the Lone Ranger movie, it seems like anything Disney does, they're going after Johnny Depp. It's got to be Johnny Depp in the film anytime they want something big. Uh, and, of course, I think the other guy that might be somewhat close to that is uh, our man, Iron Man. You see uh, Iron Man, and then right after that, he's doing Sherlock Holmes, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Since Iron Man came out, he, he became kind of a big bankable star. I don't know if he counts as in nearly as much as Johnny Depp, but presently, I, I would say those are the two biggest ones going around. Well, they're definitely the ones that get offered every <laughs> major role. Uh, there was a sci-fi movie called Gravity that one of the studios kept trying to make, and I believe they went to Depp first, and it was going to be Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie, and then Depp stepped out, and they hired Robert Downey Jr., and Angelina Jolie, <laughs> and then Angelina Jolie dropped out, and they and so it's Robert Downey Jr. and Sandra Bullock, and then Robert Downey Jr. dropped out, <laughs> and now it's I don't know the type of type of gravity. It's it's Sandra Bullock and somebody else, and I can't remember who. Oh, Clooney, right? George right. Clooney. So now it's Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, and Sandra Bullock is about to step down, <laughs> and then it's going to be George Clooney and. Sarah Jessica Parker. No. <laughs> and then I will step in. <laughs> and then the audience will step down. It's just it's, the whole movie star thing is really interesting. Because, you know, just growing up, Harrison Ford was the man. And anything Harrison Ford was in, my dad would say, you know, that guy can't make a bad movie. And yeah, so I knew. see like the Mosquito Coast and stuff because Harrison Ford's in him. Come on. I mean, and he was like the Johnny Depp thing. Yeah, he'd say regarding Henry. Where he wanted to make 
only the movies that interested him and he didn't want to be a movie star and he didn't always want to be working and all that. And now, you know, Harrison Ford makes a movie and even a movie like Cowboys and Aliens is so high profile and has a big name director and people don't care. Yeah, it's, and it's, he is, what, 65 years old or something like that, right? Yeah. Can't be uh, Harrison Ford forever, unfortunately. Well, Tom Cruise is still going strong. Yeah, but he's not 65. Well, I know, but Tom He was Cruise much younger never, to begin with. He never seems to uh, have any aging at all. He, yeah. He's just... It's because of those... Uh... Xenu? The, the... Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's because of those Scientologist things. All the stuff that he's got going on there. He's got like alien DNA or something in, injected into him. And a child by... Uh... I won't go there, just in case he ever comes across this and decides to sue our pants off. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. That Gids My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason.